Hello everyone. Welcome to this next series on taking mid journeys, your mid journey creation and turning it into a, an unreal scene. So here I'm taking my mid journey creation and I am adjusting the black and white values to try and pull the character without manually using the pen tool for every single uh, piece. Um, if you want to be more precise, definitely use the pen tool, but I feel like this will give me a clean result. Here I am just checking that everything is selected. You got to invert that selection and then you want to throw the mask on. Um, I want to have him levitating. So I got him getting rid of the bottom portion. And here I'm in After Effects. I brought in the, the, the Photoshop image. And here I am uh, doubling it up or dividing it up into five pieces. Uh, one for the head, torso, right arm, left arm, and then cloth. Um, I know that I'm gonna wanna animate each individually. So here I am masking out the, the head. You can do this in Photoshop, but I like uh, doing it in After Effects because a lot of times I switch it up if I don't like a, a certain pivot. Uh, when creating the torso, it's it's smart to create a round edge around the uh, the arms because the arms will be rotating around that. And if you have a hard edge, it'll be it'll look really jarring if uh, there's some uh, really jarring if there's some uh, just jaggy edges being shown when you rotate. Um, here I'm singling out the cloth. Uh, I added a puppet tool to the cloth. Um, this is probably one too many uh, pivot points for the cloth, but uh, I just went with it. So I kind of want like a bobbing. Uh, this is going to be an idle state. Um, so another thing is when you're creating these animations, you want to think about uh, character states. Uh, in Unreal Engine, your user input is mapped to a certain character state. So if you're idle, also known as no no player input, you want the character to have an idle animation. And this is like a bobbing, uh, kind of breathing animation. And then you want to have a movement, then you want to have a damage, a casting. Uh, just just look at your, your character and look at your, your, your project overall and determine uh, what you want to put the character through. So the thing with cloth is I like to do like a broad kind of motion with the puppet tool and then I add a turbulent displace to add some more uh, finer details to the cloth. Um, it takes quite a bit of finesse uh, in with the turbulent displace without it looking like a complete just blob. Um, and this this isn't terrible. Uh, this will also be this will also be a sprite animation or a flipbook in Unreal. So it's not going to be super close to the camera. So just as long as just as long as you have a, a believable kind of claw system, I think it's I think it's good. So here I am um, working on the arms, and I pre-comp the arms because I'm going to want to divide the arms into two: the upper arm and then the forearm, since both rotate individually. Um, you want to parent the forearm to the upper arm. Uh, just so everything is not, you know, kind of, uh, well, it wouldn't animate correctly. <laughs> You'd have disconnected arms. Uh, so here I am creating the round edge around the, the, the upper arm. And I am adjusting the pivot point since that's where I want to drive the rotation. And then for the forearm, I want the rounded edge as well. And you want to dip into that upper arm as well and then adjust the pivot point to that location. And then same with the left arm. Double it up. Uh, labeling it is absolutely a necessity, otherwise you're gonna drive yourself crazy. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, and I'm calling the upper arms main since, uh, oops, here I parented the wrong pieces to the wrong uh, main. So you want the forearm to the main, the left arm to the left main, the right, the right forearm to the, the, the right main. And this arm's a little trickier. You can't really discern where the elbow is. Uh, so you kind of have to kind of have to make it up. Adjust the pivot point. Mask out the forearm. You can tell I was a little confused as to where I should do it, but I think that I think this was a fine result. Adjust the pivot point. Now you're ready for animating. I know that he's bobbing up and down, so I kind of want to to mimic um, when he's going up. I want it the arms to be down, and then vice versa when he goes when he goes down. And a lot of times when you're doing these, um, creating a little bit of offset between, say, for instance, the two arms um, makes it a lot more believable. The, the goal is to, to create a, a loop that's kind of fresh that you, you wouldn't mind looking at for extended periods of time. I mean, when you're in your idle state, you're, you have no player input. So I hope or you know, the goal is that the user will eventually move. So you'll probably witness, you know, maybe like a, a couple seconds of this idle state. And when I when I work on these, I tend to overdo it at first, and you can see throughout this uh, this process um, that I end up deleting over half the keyframes that I that I lay down, and that's totally fine. So here I am um, dissecting the eye. Or extracting the eye. I want to create a uh, a backing to this eye that's somewhat believable. Um, I, I could have went a little further to add like a texture or like a gradient, um, but I just wanted to to kind of kind of match the the bounce light from the rim. And again, you know, this is going to be far away from the camera, so it's not absolutely a necessity to. To, to do all these fine details. And using that mask that I used for, to fill the back, I used that as a mat for the the main eye movement. And what that what that is, is it, it basically says, hey, in this area, the eye can move. And then outside of it, it's, uh, it's, it's not apparent or it's not visible. So here I am overdoing it. Uh, for an idle state, this is way too much. So uh, here I am deleting keyframes, and that's still a little too much. I end up redoing it all and just doing like a hairline uh, and movement or position values. And with the eye, uh, it's not slow moving. Slow moving eyes, you know, that's that's like the the quizzical kind of like a judgmental eye. Uh, eyes primarily dart so you want to move and then double up that keyframe and then extend it out so it holds on that position and here I am adjusting the speed graph uh, just to get a little more more play so after doing that eye I wanted to do the eye on the uh, the cloak and it's the same process you mask out the the main area then you want to fill it and this one I actually did a gradient Because I wanted a a little more play um, with that one, since it's it's a little bit more in the light, so you kind of need to um, dress it up a little bit more than that top one.
So I'm using, uh, again, an adjustment layer as the eye mat. I'm copying over that same mask that I drew initially over to the eye mat. And then now here I am extracting the eye. Adjust the pivot point. Uh, with this one, I know I'm going to want to um, kind of flip it. So when it's traveling left, I want to flip the scale to a negative value to have it uh, flipped. It's a, it's a cheap method to, to, to add more uh, complexity to your, to your creature. And we ate. We end up doing that in Unreal as well. So when the player is traveling right, um, we're going to add a, a rotation value where it just flips. Um, you can do you can either do scale or you can do rotation. Um, uh, there's pluses and minuses to, to both. Uh, sometimes you want to just create a an animation for the left, um, but that could you know if you're super taxed on time, I would just just flipping it through a rotation value or a scale is, is perfectly fine. So here I am previewing the, the motion and seeing if it's ready to go. Here I am adding a little bit more uh, play to the the overall movement. So I have the bobbing, and then I created another null as the uh, the side to side. And you want to you want to parent either null to uh, probably the bobbing to the side to side. So that's not bad. I think that's a perfect um, initial idle state. Uh, we can always change it after the fact. Um, but I think it's just about ready to go to Unreal. Oh, actually, I wanted to, uh, to animate the head before I was, before I export. And then add some secondary cloth animations. So for the for the secondary cloth, I create an adjustment layer with a turbulent displace, and then I just masked out the uh, the areas that I want to add the more finite detail. Uh, you, you're also going to want to parent that adjustment layer to one of the uh, uh, the the nulls, otherwise you'll get some some weird results. So here I'm animating the head. I went a little too crazy at first with the the rotation, and you'll see that I that I kind of take it back a notch. I just want to have the head kind of you know inhaling and exhaling, and then um, add a little bit of play. So here I'm spacing out the keyframes. I don't want it super, super like twitchy. Added an ease, so the motions kind of ease into each other.
Here I am cleaning up my project. Uh, for the sprite creation, I, uh, a really, really uh, important part of it is to always work in power of twos. Um, game engines, they, they, it's, it takes a lot less processing power um, to, to ingest uh, assets and, and media as power of twos. And power of twos, it, it's, you know, essentially it's, it, it can be divided by two, it can be multiplied by two. So like, 200 by 200 and that can go up to like 2000 by 2000 so this one i believe is 700 by 1000 so it's 350 by 500 and then you keep dividing that and it just has to be a uh, power of twos here i am adding a deep glow to the eye with just a little bit of animation Just a slight glowing. And then another important part is uh, since you extract it in Photoshop, you want to make sure that you get a clean alpha. So what I did is I doubled up the character and then I, and then I added a color overlay as a white and then I use that white as a luma mat just to make sure that it gets a clean alpha. And the way that Unreal ingests uh, these sprites, you absolutely need a clean alpha. And for my sprite program, I used a uh, glue it. And what you do is you, you, you render in PNGs and then you export in PNGs and you use glue it to, to save your sprite sheet. And a sprite sheet is a one, uh, a one page image or it's just a what it's just one image that contains all the motion in there and in unreal you can you can extract those sprites by using a column system or uh, addressing or saying hey like there i want four rows by five columns and in unreal you can specify that so here I am opening up Unreal as a new project. I just did a 2D side scroller. Here I am creating an Unreal project. Just called it YouTube character for now. Create project. And you can either you can either start from scratch or you can start from one of the pre uh, pre built uh, scenes. Um, it, do, it doesn't matter. Um, I think to, to start, definitely start with uh, one of the pre-mades. You got the, the 2D side scroller, then you got a 2.5D side scroller, which is a mix of 3D and sprites and, um, and otherwise 2D textures. So here again, I'm creating a new folder for, um, for textures. This is where I'm going to import the sprites. So in textures, I want to drag over the sprite sheet. I want you to right click it, apply paper, and apply extract sprites. And what the paper did is it, 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 uh, it creates a clean alpha um, on top of the sprite that you outputted. So here it, it, it did well at uh, extracting it, but I still want to do it manually just to make sure that there's not any, uh, any crazy stuff. So for your cell width and, and cell height, um, you want to input what your composition uh, resolution was. That was 700 by 1000. So you wanna click, you wanna click extract and what it does is it outputs each individual frame. And you want to look for any uh, any blank, any blank frames and you want to delete those. Otherwise, you'll get a uh, after the animation, there'll be nothing there and then it'll just repeat.
So when I extract the sprites, I move it to a sprites folder. I like to rename that folder to idle state, um, just the different states. And then um, you can do that with effects as well. And I created a, uh, uh, a flipbook folder as well. Uh, so when you do extract your sprites, you have you have all those images. You can't you can't throw all those images in your scene. So you want to select them all, right click, create flipbook, and it's exactly what it is. It's like it's like taking that those like post-it notes and then drawing a uh, uh, an animation on every single frame. So I usually don't do this. I dragged the uh, the character to the. Um, to the existing uh, source flipbook, which was otherwise that mannequin um, that Unreal usually just drops in there. Uh, here I am scaling it down a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> that I got from previous mid journeys. Uh, but first, I wanted to create a kind of like a magical cloud. To, to put under the character. So I just did a uh, simple turbulent noise, I cranked up the contrast and brightness, didn't really know what I wanted at first, so I was just cycling through all the different uh, uh, kind of noise types. So cloudy, cloudy is fine. It's important to get like a good uh, contrast from whites and blacks. And here I animated the offset and then the evolution. The evolution is is like a um, it just randomizes the noise in a pretty uh, pretty visually pleasing um, method. Here I am creating a loop, <clears throat> creating a loop for the uh, the cloud animation. And then I added a tritone to uh, decolorize it. And what the uh, tritone does is it takes highlights, uh, midtones, and shadows, and it adds color values to it. <clears throat> so starting from a black and white uh, image, is perfectly fine at first, and then you can start like dialing everything in. Um, that's why I don't get discouraged if your effect looks like complete garbage. This this effect, uh, it, it's not it's not the best, um, but I think for the illustration, it's it's perfectly fine. Um, but but yeah, don't when when especially working on Unreal and working with all these, um, you know, have fun with it. Don't don't set out to make the next, you know, like Fortnite or something or, um, or, you know, blockbuster film with, you know, visual effects. Uh, just have a lot of fun, add your own finesse to it. Um, for this, I wanted to have like pops of like lightning or like pops of like magical color. So I just used a, uh, just a, a solid and then I masked it out and added a, uh, add blend layer just to get some like lightning and randomness to this cloud. You see again, uh, I usually start super crazy and then I dial it back down. Especially if the character's gonna be over it, you don't want it, uh, you don't want this to be super uh, well, tacky. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just doing some fine tuning. I wanted to punch it up a little bit with exposure. And again, this is all very 
plug and play. It's uh, it's going to take you a bit to arrive at what you want. And in looking at this, I know that it's uh, it's a little too fast, and it's a little too um, uh, a little too simple. I wanted to add some like um, some randomness, so I added a turbulent displace to the overall motion. So it's not looking terrible. Here I'm adjusting the shapes. It's looking good. Wanted to pre-comp it to make sure that I had a uh, no clipping on the uh, the edges because when, when you have the effect running in Unreal Engine, you'll notice hard hard edges. And if this effect clipped the the left, right, bottom, or top, uh, we would see it. That's extremely tacky. So here I wanted to create a kind of source light underneath. So I just did another solid, masked it out, feathered it, and then added a uh, blend mode to it. And then wasn't quite sure what this would, this would result in. Uh, sometimes deep glow works, sometimes it doesn't. So right now it's kind of giving off like a an underwater type of type of feel. And here's one of the uh, the tools that I use that's very very uh, random, and you would not even think to use it. Uh, it's a transition image wipe, and what it does is it it takes an image that you bring in or create and it uses that as a wipe for a layer and this could this could help randomize a lot of your uh, a lot of your stuff you don't have to do a, a 0 to 100 transition um, you could leave it at uh, i think this was i think like 50% see it just adds a little bit more depth to your clouds and I wanted to add some lightning, so I used uh, some some stock footage that I got from Action Visual Effects. Added a blend mode. Added another layer of lightning. I want to mask it out because the the tips of the lightning, they don't have to be seen. They have to, be, you know, they could be like inside the clouds. Here I am creating some randomness to the uh, to the clouds. I'm actually slowing them down too. There's, they were traveling a little bit too fast. I had to make sure that it looped as well. I'm 
this video is sped up uh, quite a bit, so it may look like it's super fast. Here I am masking out again because I noticed that there's that hard edge on the left side. So you just want to feather it. Play with the exposure to bring out some, some highlights. And then for the clouds, you don't you don't need the seven hundred by uh, by one thousand uh, resolution. You can do a uh, you can do a smaller smaller height value, but it has to be power of two still. So I think this is ready. Uh, I'm doing the same method, rendering out as, as PNGs with alphas. And then I'm taking glue it, import all the frames, and then create four columns. Take it into Unreal, import the, the image sequence again, or import the sprite sheet, apply 2D paper, right click extract sprites, um, adjust the cell width, cell height to the exact resolution that you had in After Effects. Extract. And then drop your new, delete the, the blank images. Select your sequence, throw it in sprites, create a folder in sprites for magic clouds. Keeping a clean folder system and clean hierarchy um, is absolutely important. So for Magic Clouds, select them all, create flipbook. And then for flipbooks, I like to, to rename the, the, the beginning as FB. Drop that in flipbook, go to your flipbooks, and then drag it into the scene. And it doesn't look terrible. Um, I think for this purpose, it'll it'll do just fine for a side scroller game. But um, but you're going to want to to adjust the uh, the feathered masks and the uh, the alpha for these because it's looking a little harder edged. Um, and if that's the case, you can try doubling it up just to add a little bit more variety. So here I'm doubling it up. I want one in front of him, one magic cloud in front of him. Um, so he's kind of in the in the middle of this uh, this storm. I want to flip it around. So it's looking pretty cool. So since I had some pieces from my previous exercise in Unreal Engine and Midjourney, um, I'm, I've got some assets that I can import into this to add more to our uh, environment. And for the environment, we're going to, we're going to do the same, the same method of extracting a sprite. Uh, this extracted cleanly. It's not really a it's not a flip book but I don't know why I edited it there so don't don't do that it's just a sprite uh, same with uh, the next piece which is like a kind of like a mushroom umbrella you 
And then I had a uh, a house with like a little hill. So here I'm dragging the uh, the flip books on here, or the sprites. All right, you can't see this one because it's supposed to be like a silhouetted uh, kind of bush. And we'll be able to see it once we throw the, the background in there. But for now, I'm just gonna place it where I think it'll be useful. And here's that house with the hill. And when you're dealing with these individual pieces or just any uh, uh, art assets, if um, if there's still image, PNG with alpha is just fine. Targas are fine. Targas are uh, a better file format for, for, for games. They have a better compression algorithm. So I did find it. So once you start bringing in your mid journey and your animations, um, this is more kind of like a look dev kind of start. Um, when you do your environments, you want to create more modular pieces. So I mean, like the umbrellas, they're fine, but that house on the hill. Uh, that's an unnecessary uh, sprite. You want to extract the house and then you want to extract pieces of the hill that can be combined with other pieces. And when I say modular, I um, it's, it's modular in a sense that, um, so if you have like a brick path, you want to be able to duplicate and multiply that brick path, you know, hundreds of times to create your your main play, you know, play field. And you know, it, whether it's on the right side or left side, it's believable. And I'd actually want to animate the house. I want to animate like the the light in there, or maybe have like someone inside, like silhouetted. Um, as I found, <laughs> just the more you throw at it, the more believable it is. <laughs> And then for the background, I just used a plane with a uh, just an Unreal texture. And here you get some clipping. Uh, it's because all the pieces are on the Z axis, really, or rather Y axis. So it's looking pretty cool. Just the just the the speed that we can do this in is just unmatched. Um, this probably would have taken a concept team, you know, about a week to create these images and then for animation teams to to start on the, the idle estates. So this this was done at like 11 p.m. Uh, it took me about two hours to, to start from mid journey creation to this. And again, don't 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 base your, you know, your success on the amount of time that you spend on something. <clears throat> uh, the, the the key takeaway is, uh, you know, game development is fun. It's it's a blast, and pairing Mid Journey with Unreal is a match made in heaven for especially developers who don't really have a huge um, skill set to to animate or design. Thank you for watching and look forward to the next series.